All right, we're recording. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kelly Crawford, and I'm the Public Engagement Coordinator for the Baptist Association. And I'm here today with Megan Hurd, who is the General Manager for Baptist Care New South Wales and ACT for the governance and legal side of things. So hi, Megan. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Kelly. Great to be here. <laughs> And we've been um, we've been talking and consumed about um, our propensity, I guess, to be defined by our culture. And you can't help but notice um, in Australia there is a cultural element to our housing. Now, Baptist Care is a provider of social and affordable housing, uh, and it also assists people who are homeless or people who maybe um, experiencing financial insecurity for one reason or another. When we think about housing in Australia, Megan, what are some of the ways you see us be defined culturally by um, housing? Mm, it's a really good question, Kelly. So I think we probably all realise that housing's had a really, and continues to have a very strong cultural influence in Australia. So owning your own home became known as the great Australian dream in the prosperous decades following the second world war. And it still sits with us and resonates really strongly with us as Australians. Uh, it's become a reality and it became a reality back then for millions of Australians, our capital cities grew, um, but it came with some intended consequences as well. So that included rising infrastructure costs. It included skyrocketing land prices, it also includes a stigma which is attached to people who don't own their own home, which suggests that somehow those people have failed. Do you want wow. me to go on to the sub? Do you want me to go on to the sub points of? Um, well, you can, can ask we, more can we, can we follow on from that? That's a really interesting, like that, that idea of stigma. Um, and we know in other countries, um, there's less stigma attached to not owning a home. There's more longer term rentals, rental, renting property is um, more normalized um, in society. So is, is the dream of owning a home, uh, I guess we know it's not attainable for everyone, obviously. Should it be? Yeah, so yeah, right, you're right. The, the dream of owning your own home is not attainable by everyone and there are a bunch of things that stand in the way so the cost of living stands in the way cyclical disadvantage stands in the way and unexpected trauma or tragedy can also stand in the way and look to be honest you know some people it becomes a choice about what they what they want and how they want to live and do they want to invest in a home or not um, we're starting to overcome some of that stigma in some ways so we're beginning to recognise that there are groups of people like essential workers, nurses, teachers, police officers uh, who need more affordable housing, but there's still a big stigma attached to social housing. And we see, we see that in some of the communities where we develop our social and affordable housing. Um, the people in those communities who don't want us to be there, they're really worried about the type of people who might move into that housing. And it's the stereotype that causes that, that stereotype that for some reason, people in social housing, they're all drug users, they're bludgers, they're people who don't have enough get up and go to try and take care of themselves. But the reality is that some of those people are the kindest, most gentle, optimistic people you could meet. They've just had a tough life and they haven't owned anything themselves. So what's important is not so much that we own our own, homes what's more important is that we all have safe secure and affordable housing that might be housing we own but it might be like in other parts of the world which you mentioned it might be renting housing instead and what we do know is that if people have safe and secure housing then actually it makes a huge difference to their quality of life and it means that they we all have the ability to deal with challenges life throws at us so much better wouldn't it be so great if we as Christians could somehow contribute to this cultural shift of the great Australian dream of owning a home to the Australian dream that everyone has secure and safe housing? Like it, it's, it would be an interesting, I guess, language change and cultural shift um, for society that might just enable different 
other pathways for housing to be uh, just more normalized or released. Um, so I really like that. I really like what you said. And I guess I just wanted to think through too, because in Baptist Care, obviously you guys are in a, doing a lot of different work um, in the community and you would have seen people engaging with Baptist Care in one way or another who really have a commitment to Jesus and a commitment to doing good in their neighborhood or good in society. So what are some of the things that you've seen or what are some of the ways you've seen people do this through your work at Baptist Care? Mm. Yeah, I think one of the ways I've really seen that is in the leadership style that permeates throughout the organization. Um, we talk a lot about the importance of a servant model of leadership and we teach it in our leader, leadership courses, which are accessible from you know, the more junior emerging leaders right up to our senior leaders. And that's the leadership model of Jesus. It's characterized by submitting to a higher purpose, something which is beyond our personal interests. It's using our positions of leadership to really serve other people. Uh, it's serving others' interests before serving our own and teaching others how to become servant leaders themselves. So that approach of service is really strong throughout the organisation. And it's strong on the front line where you'd expect it to be strong, but it's also really strong in the back office support areas as well, where people come to work with that really clear service mindset, commitment to doing good uh, and coming, coming and sort of progressing the works of, of Jesus in our communities. And, you see, um, I guess you would have a number of volunteers connected to Baptist Care through various things like in age ser care services and in, in Hope Streets, um, in other forms of community service. So we talked about, I guess, in Consumed, volunteering be this being this pathway to show generosity and grace. Um, we talked about living more simply so that we have the time and availability to be more um, able to show extravagant love to our neighbors. So what are some of the benefits of volunteering that you've seen in Baptist Care, um, whether it's in age care or community services or any of the other various um, things that you do? I think it's really nice to talk about some of, the, some of the examples that I've witnessed in thinking about volunteering benefits to us, benefits to individuals. Um, and if I could use a couple of those examples with you. Last week, I was really privileged because uh, we have so many wonderful volunteers across the organisation, but I was really privileged to interview one of our beautiful volunteers from Northern New South Wales. Uh, she, she was um, being recognised for the service to the community that she has been involved in for quite some time. She spoke about how she didn't really feel like a volunteer and how, you know, Jesus didn't turn up and say, hey, do you guys want to volunteer and fill out the forms and do your police checks and here's a shirt, come along. He just said, follow, follow me and serve, serve people with me. Um, so she spoke about that and the satisfaction that she really got out of working in and being in the community. Um, so she works with our community services team, doing all sorts of things. And one really powerful story she told was uh, about how the team up there was serving the community after some floods had gone through the town and how, um, how they were serving food to people who were working on cleaning up. And on this one particular day, she and some others went into a building which had been really seriously damaged by the floodwaters Everybody was quiet, serious, down, working hard. And just that provision of simple, a simple thing like a sausage sandwich um, really turned the mood around. After you know, people stopped for 15 minutes, they talked for 15 minutes, the mood lifted. Um, so simple things, which you, know, you don't necessarily feel are volunteering in a strict sense, but they're making a difference in the community. And another example that resonates, resonates with me too is one of our pastoral care volunteers who works in our, who has done sort of work in our aged care homes. And he tells stories, he's a mu musician. 
He tells stories about coming into a residential aged care home, playing music for the residents that they know and they love, and then just seeing the smiles on people's faces and seeing, seeing people sort of move, dance, um, remember the words to songs that perhaps they wouldn't be able to do without that, that influence as well. So um, there are great examples that we have, great stories from our volunteers. Thanks for that, Megan. And I'm sure that we can find out more about volunteering with Baptist Care um, on the Baptist Care website, but um, it's really lovely to hear those stories and know that there are pathways available for us um, as we seek to, I guess, find a way to do good work in our world. Um, and be connected with organizations trying to do that as well. So thanks so much for your time today um, and sharing with us a bit about what Baptist Care is doing um, in social affordable housing and, and um, community services and aged care. Thanks. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Kelly. Now I'm going to stop.